How much suspension travel, how waterproof are e-bikes, and how much weight can an e-bike take? All these questions answered in this week's Ask EMBN. Okay, let's dive in. Let's go. Okay, got this one from Brendan AG. Let's go. Hashtag Sorry. Ask EMBN. How much difference, in your opinion, is the quality of ride and components between the base metal dual suspension e-bike and the next levels up, e.g. the Trek Powerfly series? You know what? Some say that is better value to get an expensive hardtail rather than the base level dual suspension bike. Good question. This good question, but simple answer. I would certainly not get, if, you, if it's an option, I'd always go for the dual suspension bike over a expensive hardtail. But it's the age old question here and what you can't confuse is that if you, you can you, you can't assume that because you're spending more on componentry you're going to get a better bike because it all depends on the brand because some bikes can have um, really expensive componentry but because the chassis and the suspension design is, design is so poor then you're going to get a, a bad ride quality anyway so you better get a chassis and suspension that works really well with good geometry and less good quality or less expensive componentry because you could have a bike which is you could have a bike which is two thousand pound which actually performs better than a bike which is five thousand pound it all depends on the brand and to answer your question of whether you should get a hard tail over a full suspension like i said earlier i personally think you should go for the full suspension every day of the week mm -hmm. yeah i think in, sometimes on those cheaper especially the full suspension models they're going to use a slightly smaller battery to so just bear that in mind if you're looking at doing those longer rides but the thing is chris i think with with hard tails is with, with an e-bike you need to maintain that traction mm -hmm. on the rear tire as much as possible and it's probably the hard tails is that the, the wheel tends to bounce around quite a lot when it goes off road. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And as you say, like the heart of the bike is that frame and the suspension. So that is often shared across the, the platforms. It's just those components, as Steve mm -hmm. has mentioned, that are going to bring that price point down. So. Number one, number one is to make sure that bike fits you correctly and it is suited for, for purpose for the type of trails that you're going to be riding. Yeah. Next up from Scott Practico. Scott, I think we've heard from you previously. I am trying to decide uh, between a Giant Trans E Plus 1SX Pro or a high bike with similar spec. Which high bike do you feel is most similar and who has the best software running the Yamaha motor? I've never had problems with the Yamaha motor or software on the high bikes. No, the uh, Yamaha it's very simple. Yamaha motor is definitely super capable. If you're talking about the app that connects to it, I would say the Giant one has more features in it compared to the e-bike with the e-connect. Um, that is the app wise, but the actual software that runs it, I'd imagine is quite similar. Hmm. What's your thoughts, Steve? Uh, which high bike do you feel is more similar? Well, I think any, any high bike we've recently done uh, I think we did the rock feature, and you we were you were on a 150 bike. Yep. I was on a 180 bike. That's both high bikes. Then we both were on Yamaha motors. Yep. So, uh, and you can see, you know, they're both very very capable. What are you talking oh. about? The Giant Trance says that's, that's 140 mil travel bike. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I said the 140 mil is purely more sort of a trail kind of bike, whereas the bigger bikes, the 150 and the 180 high bike, like me and Steve, yeah. ride is a capable bike up and down the hill, yeah. rather than just more of a trail sort of. Yeah, and if you, if you want to see what what both capable of, we did a video on a different on a different brand. We did a video on a specialized uh, back early in the year comparing the 135. 150 Levo compared to the 180 mil travel Canevo and what we found was that actually the Canevo can go uphill just as quickly as the 135 bike. Okay, this question's in from Bugboy1520005. Um, when will Santa Cruz get into the e-bike game? Definitely one of the late joiners if they're ever going to join the party, but I think the biggest thing the manufacturers struggle with is actually that cost and actually entering the market with a competitive e-bike. Like Santa Cruz is quite a, a high-end bike brand, so for them to bring an e-bike to their game, it would have to be a standout one. And when you're competing against guys like Specialized who've got it quite dialed, I think it's quite an investment for that company to try and bring a competitive e-bike to the do market. You, do you really think it's down to money? Do you think it's more to do with attitude and... Possibly, some people yeah. some people have decided not to go down the e-bike mm. route maybe it's it's more a philosophy rather than a than a money Possibly, thing. yeah yeah 
but I've not heard anything of a Santa Cruz e-bike recently. So yeah, develop IT. As the motors are sealed, I would imagine water is not too much of an issue, but if you're crossing a shallow stream and drop the bike on its side, would that be a problem? Such as submerging the battery pack. Would salt water be a worse problem in the event? Would catching some air help out? So do you mean catching air as in doing a jump, or how do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what I can say is that we've got our e-bikes ridiculously wet. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, ridiculously wet, um, and they've you know they've they've worked pretty well as long as you get back at the end of the day and and put them in a nice warm room, a nice sort of laundry room or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, we actually, in reference to your question about salt, however, now that is bad news. That is seriously bad news because. We took a boat from uh, the Noida Peninsula in Scotland back across the mainland in, in um, on Malig, and uh, we were literally on the boat for half an hour, yet the amount of salt water, we were crossing the Atlantic, and uh, for days after there was parts rusting, there was salt getting in everywhere, I'd keep e-bike well away from salt water. Yeah, when it comes to fresh water, actually that battery pack is one of the, uh, the most waterproof parts of your e-bike. If you're gonna drop that bike into the river, you're probably gonna get water damage more on like your control panels, things like that. They're a lot more uh, prone to water damage than the battery. Yeah. This one from uh, Ipotain. Um, hi, EMBN. Can you tell me if you're gonna do a 2018 EMBN Bike Awards or even some group tests for trails and enduro class of e-mountain bikes? Cheers, Marco. Uh, no, we don't do tests or reviews here on EMBN, but what we try to do is give you as much information as you can to make a considered judgment, considered purchase of an e-bike. And do you know what? Um, I think whatever e-bike you ride, it's you'll have, you'll have a good time on it, I guarantee you. So we've got this one in from Ian Wright. How can you find an e-bike specialist local bike shop? Now, do you know what? I didn't know local bike shop was LBS. I was thinking pounds. How do you pounds. find specialist pounds? <laughs> Learn something every day, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a good way of uh, how I like to do it is probably through social media, keep an eye on those uh, guys join a few like e-bike um, groups and stuff and you always get to hear about all those good guys that do good servicing on e-bikes. You're big on social media, aren't you? Yeah, I'm always on social media. Yeah, so maybe you can give some information on what local bike shops then? It depends where you are. What if, if you're the same Wales, where would you go? Uh, SJ Cycle. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, uh, to be honest Ian, I think lots of lots of mountain bike shops are now selling e-bikes. I don't know that many who are not. Mm. So uh, I think one call will probably all be all you need to a local bike shop mm. and they'll tell you what direction to get in, right? Or maybe just go down to Trail Centre and... Um, Word on the street. Word on the street. Mm -hmm. But like Chris says, social media. Word of mouth, definitely. Next up. James and the Giant Peach. Ask EMBN, given the restrictions on batteries and the airlines, how do you travel all over Europe and worldwide with your e-bikes? Do you hire batteries? Uh, yes, we do. So uh, recently we went to Italy to do a feature, um, a two-day feature. And what we did was um, there's actually a specialised shop there which hire batteries at. And I think you'll find that more and more, particularly in France and Italy, where there are places where you can hire your batteries. Uh, alternatively, you can ship them by airmail, but you need to be uh, you need to be regis a registered uh, battery handler, or maybe you can get I don't know maybe you can get a local shop to do it for you. Uh, you can actually do it within individual countries, but uh, as I say, kind of the the laws are different in each country. Yeah. It is very difficult, though. Definitely very difficult. Cool. And we got this one in from Neil Cole. Hi guys, now winter is here. Should I take my battery off my bike and keep it indoors where it's a bit warmer? I keep my EMTB in the garage. Um, good tip for batteries. Batteries like to be like this, so no extreme temperatures, hot or cold. Um, if you're looking at keeping that battery in its best condition, I would suggest bringing it indoors when you're charging it. It's also going to keep that core temperature up when you hit the trails and get out there for a ride. But I've done a, a good video on battery care and that's all down in the details below. So if you're using that battery in the winter or below freezing, it's really advisable to bring that battery inside and actually charge it up at room temperature. Some batteries won't actually even charge as below freezing. So just check that it's not trying to charge it whilst it's just too cold. Also on these rides, you might find that a battery sleeve or a thermal cover will actually increase and hold that battery's core temperature. And it should, in theory, give you a bit more range too. Matthew Hall, hi there. Hi Matthew. Um, 
Just wondered whether you thought an electric downhill bike would be capable of doing, being, or being that do-it-all bike. I currently ride a Cube Stereo Hybrid 140. I still ride single track, but lately found myself enjoying downhill and free ride more so. So I was looking to buying a new high bike exterior downhill eight. So I'm wondering, now these downhill bikes are capable of climbing, could they be used for every aspect of riding, or would I be better with a 160 to 180 mil bike instead, as I can't afford two decent bikes, I think, you need to be very careful with your decision making here um, because it, it's down to many things. It's down to the geometry of the bike, it's down to the gearing. Now I say geometry because uh, a downhill bike, the seat tube angle is sometimes uh, quite laid back compared to um, say a 160, 180 bike. Because when, you do, when, you, when you're gonna be doing lots of climbing and descending, you need it to be further forwards and remember, if you've got a coil downhill bike, then uh, the sag on that bike is quite considerable. So you're going to be leading quite a long way back on the seat. So it all depends on the bike, basically. But you'd be, you'd be amazed how much a 180 mil travel bike can do. Clinton Van Zyl. Uh, I'm a big guy, a little over 120 kilos. Chris, you take it up from there. Yeah, 120 kilos, try and get out on my non-e-bike as much as possible. And I'm wondering if an e-bike would be a good option. I'm worried that being a big guy, the battery might struggle and I'll be confined to short rides. Should I wait till I've lost some weight and then get an e-bike? Thanks for the great content. <laughs> Clinton, just get on with it. Just yeah. get on with it. Go and buy it. Get Go out on. there. Go and have a good time. Yep. Stop um, stop struggling. Start enjoying yourself. Great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. That battery won't struggle at all. Um, you'll start well, losing weight. It's not quite true. It's mm. not quite true. The battery, well, there will be a difference. Depends on the terrain. Depends on your fitness. Yeah, definitely. Basically, you might, you know, will you be, will you be riding in eco mode? Will you be riding in turbo mode? So it's not. Uh, yeah, if you're fit, you'll ride in eco, and it'll be fine. So, yeah. as you say, you get out quite a lot on your on your other bike. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think you won't struggle whatsoever. It'll be a good way to actually. You're going to lose weight. You're going to gain fitness. So, yeah, get on with it. Because so. what's going to happen is you're going to get the e bike, and you could probably be going to go out way more often than you are on your non e bike. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Clinton, please just get go on with it. buy the bike. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it from another Ask EMBN. Hope we've been of some help. And don't forget, you guys can put your answers to, your, to some of the questions as well. What I will say from this week's show, don't go confusing price with performance because it simply is not the case. And don't go mixing salt water with fresh water. And finally, uh, don't forget that travel is all relative to where the places you go riding your e-bike. Yeah, don't forget to drop us any questions you might have in the box below in the comments. Hashtag ask EMBN, ask your question, we'll get back to you in next week's show. Hope you've enjoyed today's show. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Drop us some comments in the box below. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN and we'll see you next week. Like, follow, subscribe. See you later.